Starship 31 had some of its heat shield tiles removed from the sides, leaving parts of the ship's skin exposed to extreme temperatures. Recently, Elon Musk just revealed a shocking new direction for their heat shield design. And yes, I promised another video on SpaceX's materials. This is just the perfect time to dive into these two major topics, steel and heat shields. But before we get into the main content, please hit the subscribe button to support us and stay updated on all the latest analyses. As we know, Starship, I mean the ship, still hasn't been equipped with a landing system. SpaceX is actively researching and developing landing equipment designed to be mounted on both sides of the vehicle. To prepare for this, they've had to remove some heat shield tiles from the areas where the system will be installed for testing purposes. Looking at the images and time-lapse, we can clearly observe some notable changes. While the ship survived re-entry and achieved all its objectives, the hull, particularly the areas where tiles were removed, showed visible signs of deformation. Most evident were discoloration and a distinct dent hinting at thermal warping. Now let's take a quick look back at Flight 5. During that test, SpaceX experimented with six aluminum-coated heat shield tiles in the same area where tiles were removed for Flight 6, and the aluminum tiles melted during re-entry. Taking a closer look at the hull's discoloration from the latest flight, the metal surface has transitioned to a bluish hue. This suggests that the temperature in the tile-free zones exceeded 600 degrees Celsius, which is also the melting point of aluminum. Now, did you all know that Starship is currently built using 304L stainless steel? This is a special alloy with high chromium content, 18 to 20 percent, nickel, 8 to 12 percent, and extremely low carbon content, less than or equal to 0.03 percent. The color changes on the surface of the steel aren't just thermal discoloration, they're also the result of oxidation. Under high temperatures, 304L stainless steel reacts with atmospheric oxygen, forming a chromium-rich oxide layer on its surface. This is a natural self-protective mechanism of the steel. The oxide layer acts like a shield, preventing further oxidation from penetrating deeper into the material. Essentially, it provides some degree of protection. Thanks to its ultra-low carbon content of just less than or equal to 0.03%, the precipitation of chromium carbides at grain boundaries is almost entirely avoided. This is a critical factor in maintaining the steel's corrosion resistance. So, perhaps, things weren't as bad as they seemed, but it was still a lot for Starship to handle. Data from Flight 6 reveals that the re-entry process was significantly more intense than in Flight 5, with prolonged exposure to extreme heat. When temperatures hovered around 650 degrees Celsius, the steel, which had been cold-rolled to increase its strength, began to lose its durability. And when Starship splashed down, it faced a phenomenon akin to thermal shock. Imagine a piece of steel at extremely high temperatures suddenly cooled by seawater. This created a massive temperature gradient between the material's surface and core. The surface rapidly contracted, while the core remained hot and expanded, generating enormous internal stresses within the structure. In metallurgy, rapid cooling techniques are often used to harden steel, depending on its intended application. However, the trade-off is ductility. The material becomes more brittle. For Starship 31, it's not just the sudden temperature change that's a challenge, but also the mechanical impact force from splashing down. The combination of thermal stress and mechanical stress inevitably led to structural deformation. Well, at the end of the day, we all know Starship is meant to land on chopsticks, not in the ocean. However, with the current heat shield configuration, the ship can survive a single flight but it would be very difficult to refly. Reinforcing the thermal protection on the sides is absolutely necessary. Anyway, Elon Musk himself once said, you may have to add them back later. In fact, if you do not end up adding back at least 10% of them, then you didn't delete enough. That being said, we have to acknowledge that choosing stainless steel as Starship's material was a brilliant decision. If the ship were made of aluminum alloys like the Space Shuttle, the outcome would likely have been very different. The superior heat resistance of stainless steel not only enhances the structural durability, but also allows for a reduction in the requirements for the Thermal Protection System, TPS, a smart engineering balance. But Elon Musk has also admitted that the Thermal Protection System, TPS, is the biggest remaining technological challenge for Starship. He stated, The biggest technology challenge remaining for Starship is a fully and immediately reusable heat shield. Being able to land the ship, refill propellant, and launch right away with no refurbishment or laborious inspection. That is the acid test. The persistent issue of heat shield tiles peeling off remains a stubborn problem. This could become the main bottleneck in achieving the rapid turnaround times Elon Musk envisions for Starship. Currently, SpaceX is working on a new generation of heat shield tiles that are significantly smaller than the standard ones in use today. If you take a close look at the pin legs on the ship, it's clear that SpaceX is moving toward a hybrid solution, using both standard-sized tiles and smaller ones in different areas of the spacecraft. But not stopping there, 
Recently, Elon Musk revealed a groundbreaking shift in their heat shield design approach. Metallic shielding, supplemented by ullage gas or liquid film cooling, is back on the table as a possibility. Why he said, back on the table? In fact, SpaceX tested metallic heat shield technology nearly five years ago. This isn't a new idea, but rather the revival of an ambitious early concept. Look, they are testing the metallic shielding. At its core, this is a transpirational cooling system. The windward side of the spacecraft, the part that faces the intense airflow during re-entry, is designed with a two-layer sandwich structure. Between these layers is a gap filled with a cooling liquid, such as water or liquid methane. The outer surface is perforated with millions of microscopic holes. The working principle behind this system is fascinating. When the spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere and the surface temperature skyrockets, the liquid stored in the cavity is drawn out through these microscopic holes, much like sweat escaping through the pores on human skin. As the liquid evaporates, it not only cools the metal surface but also creates a capillary effect, pulling more liquid from within, forming a continuous cooling cycle. The breakthrough significance of this technology lies in its reusability. Traditional heat shields often lose some of their material during re-entry, requiring repairs or replacements. In contrast, this active cooling system only consumes the cooling liquid. The underlying metal structure remains intact, and in theory, preparing for the next flight would simply involve refilling the cooling fluid tank. So, water or liquid methane? Elon Musk weighed in on this critical choice, stating, When going to approximately 1750 Kelvin, specific heat is more important than latent heat of vaporization, which is why cryogenic fuel is a slightly better choice than water. There you have it. Methane is the winner. However, in reality, both options come with their own technical challenges, and these challenges are fascinating from a scientific perspective. Let's break them down. With water, despite the external temperatures reaching up to 1500 degrees Celsius during re-entry, using water as a cooling fluid can lead to a surprising phenomenon known as snap freeze. Sounds counterintuitive, right? But this is a well-documented physical process, and it makes perfect sense when you dive into the mechanics behind it. When water evaporates at an extremely rapid rate, it absorbs a massive amount of heat from its surroundings. This is the latent heat of vaporization. The heat absorption is so intense that it can cause the remaining water to cool suddenly, freezing almost instantly. In the harsh conditions of space, especially within the narrow cooling channels of the heat shield, this can result in severe blockages, disrupting the entire cooling system. Switching to liquid methane, we encounter a different challenge. At high temperatures, the hydrocarbon molecules in methane can undergo a process called coking, where carbon atoms begin to bind together, forming solid deposits. These carbon buildups can also lead to blockages, compromising the efficiency of the cooling system. So, while each option offers unique benefits, both also introduce hurdles that SpaceX must overcome to perfect this groundbreaking thermal protection technology. This is a perfect example of just how complex spacecraft design can be. Fascinating, isn't it? TPS design and material science are very, very interesting. If you'd like me to make more videos on this topic, just comment yes below. X. To ensure you don't miss any key updates on this thrilling journey, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We're committed to providing in-depth analysis and the latest news on SpaceX's every step towards conquering the cosmos.